Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. That... <laughs> That's very nice of you. I haven't heard applause like that since Lonnie Anderson got caught in the last earthquake. <laughs> I feel in a very good mood tonight. I uh, was thumbing through the yellow pages today, and I found a guy who's gonna roll my DeLorean stock into Yuletide logs. <laughs> wow. I hope you have color at home. That, that's a color outfit. If you know, it takes a certain panache to wear yes. purple. What's panache? Style. Oh, thank you. I thought it was something weird. <laughs> I'm glad you're in a good mood tonight, especially since NBC has a new policy. We're adopting Reagan's merit plan, and we're going to pay by the laugh. <laughs> was it hot out online? Oh, I think. Look, I want you to know, I. I, I look out from my office, and I can see you standing in line, and I, I sympathize with you, and I want you to know that I care about you. <laughs> no, while you were in line sweating, I set my uh, martini pitcher on the windowsill so the, <laughs> so the condensation would drip down while you were in line. <laughs> well, let's go to the news and see if the Ayatollah left Terry Moore anything in his will. I knew that was going to get nothing. <laughs> I just... There's some good news and bad news. Uh-oh. The bad news is that Reagan is sending eight warships to El Salvador. And the good news is he's saving the love boat for a real emergency. <laughs> well, you know, you, you kind of went like that on that joke. Why was that? Well, I mean, see, I love your humor. Uh-huh. You just delight me. Sometimes when I'm driving home, I'll think of something you said during the monologue. It's just, tonight, I'll break up when I remember this. Why, why don't you sit in your car now? <laughs> Hey, did you see what happened in Central Park, New York, last night? Yes. Diana Ross was uh, doing a concert. And they had a thunderstorm, a lightning, a hail. I mean, Diana Ross learned a lesson. Don't mess around with the Supreme. <laughs> okay. Boy, can you imagine a hot, sweaty night in New York on the subway with 500,000 wet New Yorkers? <laughs> Well, let's see what else is in the news. Did you see the, uh, the Atari company? Are you familiar with the Atari company? They make a lot of the, uh, the video games. Came out today, they lost 300-some million dollars last year. Apparently, the arcade games, Pac-Man, is no longer popular. And kids are now using the quarters to rotate their eyes. <laughs> this, this is going to kind of go like this. <laughs> Uh, former President Carter was in Japan, and he met with the Prime Minister, I think his name is uh, Nakasone. Are you familiar with that? No. Nakasone. Nakasone, thank you very much. The Oriental gentleman here. <laughs> <laughs> no. And uh, Nakasone was complaining to Carter because he said that Reagan was uh, complaining that Japan is stealing jobs from Americans. And Carter said, that's OK. He stole one from me. <laughs> Something like that, he said. <laughs> no, no. Here's some good news for Los Angeles, I think. A uh, House Senate committee just voted $117 million for the construction of a subway. A subway in Los Angeles. Now, that's been in planning for many years, but now they're rushing into it so they can have the streets torn up in time for the Olympics. <laughs> I'm not sure they understand about Los Angeles people and their cars. People don't like to share their cars out here. They're used to being alone in their cars. They don't mind living together, but being together in cars is kind of kinky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. This is in the paper today. Beverly Hills, one of the wealthiest communities, I guess, in the world, is being invaded by Japanese cockroaches. It was in the paper today. Japanese cockroaches are, they're a lot like American cockroaches, uh, except they're smaller and they get better mileage. <laughs> and, uh, 
You know how you spot a Japanese cockroach? They have a little teeny camera. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty serious, so on Rodeo Drive, they're selling roach pagodas. <laughs> there is a new movie, not a new movie, actually, it's an old movie. The Star, um, the Star is Born, which came out in 1937, I believe, mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Originally, apparently they found some footage that was never used. Some fellow put it in, and they're reissuing it with all the new Judy Garland footage. You read about that? Isn't that fascinating? Is that playing here in Los Angeles, sure. Fred? Fred de Cordova also had some very happy news from the, from the Academy today. They have restored the missing footage to a picture that he directed, the now legendary Paw Kettle Passes a Stone. <laughs> First time, uh, moviegoers can now see the uh, famous screaming sequence that was. <laughs> They're also working on the film that I did in 1961 with Connie Francis called uh, "Looking for Love," and the guy is trying to lose 24 minutes out of the picture, <laughs> with the eventual hope that he will lose uh, the entire film. Oh, Pidoki. Tomorrow's an interesting day. Oh, may not be. <laughs> it's Amelia Earhart's birthday. <laughs> I think that was the, the first time on record that the instance of the luggage turning up, but they lost, uh, they lost the flight, didn't they? <laughs> Here's an, uh, I know, on the, on the way home, you'll like that one. <laughs> now it's what was just on the, uh, on the AP Newswire, some new sex tapes have been discovered showing the poppin' fresh Pillsbury Doughboy having an orgy with the Keebler Elves. <laughs> okay, tonight we have a, an exciting show with all the people that you have mentioned. Mr. Chevy Chase is here tonight. All right. We have a very bright... Very bright comedian David Say is with us from New York. And interesting young lady uh, who has her own show out here. Uh, she does restaurant reviews. She's a nonstop talker. Her name is Karen Salkin. Karen is with us. And, and later on, Tom Selleck. You know, the big heartthrob will be out here and tell us as he's putting in an 800 number and then moving to Nebraska. <coughs> See, the uh, reason I knew that that wasn't going to do too well, if you've ever seen those ads where you call the 800 number, it says, except in Nebraska. You see, that was the idea that he said. As you're driving home tonight, and you see Ed laughing, you may join in. Anyway, thank you for coming. We'll be back in just a would say, what a crowd. Good crowd, good crowd. What can I tell you? Health is everything. So you frequently laugh on the way home, huh? Yes, I do. I've done that. Sure. You think of something funny and you start I'll tell you laugh. what I do do. You're being laughing crazy. in a car and somebody looks over and, you, and you're laughing and they look at you like yeah. you're a little disturbed. I'll tell you what is really funny and that is uh, strange, not funny, but, you know, we've, we're doing a series next year. Some of the best of Carson, the comedy pieces, right? And I've been doing some of the narration for right. that to get ready. I look at something that we did maybe 10 years ago. Right. And it's like it's another person. I'm sitting there laughing my head off. You were another person 10 years ago. I guess I was. <laughs> we both and were I'm another two person. of those persons. <laughs> Several months ago, there was an article in Los Angeles Times about, we've done this before, about the great Midwestern joke war. It started, I guess, between Iowa and Minnesota. I guess colleges do it occasionally. It's put down. Yeah. It's put down. States that uh, border each other. And apparently there's an intense rivalry and the people keep coming up with put down jokes about one another. For example, here's the examples we use. They like to ask in Minnesota why all football fields in Iowa have artificial turf. It's so the cheerleaders won't graze after the game. <laughs> so what does Iowa say? In Iowa, they're asking why Minnesotans don't drink more Kool-Aid. 
And that's because they can't figure out how to get two quarts of water into one of those little paper envelopes. <laughs> well, since we first did this, we had a bunch of letters from people around the country saying, if you think that's something, this. look at what our state is doing. All right, so we typed these up. In Tennessee, they say, what do you call a shoe store in Kentucky? A mirage. <laughs> In Kentucky, they say, why don't the women in Tennessee go in for breastfeeding? Because the milk cartons keep falling off their chests. <laughs> you see? In Arkansas, they say, what does a woman from Missouri scream when she sees a rat in her kitchen? Dinner is served. <laughs> These people are cruel. In Missouri, they say, what pets are allowed in Arkansas motels? The ones wearing wedding rings. <laughs> In Kansas, now here's one about my home state of Nebraska. In Kansas, they say, why do Nebraska brides always wear white? Well, they have no choice. Odor eaters don't come in colors. <laughs> I know. In Nebraska, they say, what's the difference between a man from Kansas and an inchworm? None whatsoever. <laughs> In Oregon, why is it easy for a man from Idaho to remember his IQ? It's the same as his shoe size. In Idaho, they say, what do women do when a man from Oregon flashes? Squint. In South Dakota, they say, how do you protect yourself if you're attacked by a North Dakota vampire? You hold up a can of deodorant. In North Dakota, they say, how do you break up a South Dakota man's marriage? You puncture his inflatable woman. <laughs> in Pennsylvania, they say, why are there no bugs in New Jersey homes? Because even cockroaches have some pride. <laughs> but, oh sure, but, in New Jersey, they say, what's the difference between Federal Express and a girl from Pennsylvania? Well, one costs $14.95 and absolutely, positively delivers overnight. The other ships packages. <laughs> so those are just a few. A lot of hostile people out there. We got these from all over the country. Here's one from David. What's the difference between an Iowa girl and an elephant? Answer, 30 pounds. <laughs> Question, how do you make up the difference? A, you force feed the elephant. <laughs> These, are, <laughs> These are cruel people out there, I'll tell you. Keep those cruel letters coming in, folks. We love them. Keeps us on our toes. Uh, Chevy Chase is here tonight. We have David Say and Karen Salkin. So stay where you are, and uh, we'll continue in a moment. Doctor. Moving along with a bombastic review. Uh, Chevy Chase first came to national attention, of course, as one of the stars of the original Saturday Night Live show. And he's done a lot of movies since then. And uh, his latest movie is called National Lampoon's Vacation. That opens, they say, all across the country next Friday. What's well, today, isn't it? No, next Friday would be next Friday. Today is Friday. <laughs> today is this Friday. That's right. Today is the 20th. Uh, 22nd. 22nd. This opens the 29th, which make it a week from today. Or How exciting. Next Friday. <laughs> Mine starts to go in the heat. Would you welcome Chevy Chase? Good to see you. No, I prefer to stand. <laughs> okay. That would be fun. Do the whole show standing up tonight. Oh, you, you brought me a gift. Uh, yes. I brought you several gifts. Uh, what? It, uh, in this case, it's a guitar. I was just at the uh, Neptune Society Bash for Amelia. <laughs> my, uh, I know you play tennis, John. Yes, I try to play well. 
And I'm not going to give you this racket because it's this is the boron racket. Well, that's very expensive. Isn't yeah, it? it's uh, Vic Braden told me the other day. Vic is a tennis coach that I am now a $500 loser. Uh, but I thought I'd bring it out here and serve a few into the audience. Anybody <laughs> wearing braces or anything? You play? You play well? I play pretty well. Uh, what do you uh, mean? Would you be an A, B, C plus? Uh, I'll be honest. Right man. in there. Uh, I would. Uh, I would say that uh, as a club player, I would be a. Uh, uh, a B plus. Oh, that's, so. that's very strong. Very yeah. strong player. That would be boxing club. It wouldn't be tennis. Uh, of course. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Freddie asked me to come and show you how to serve, and I thought maybe you'd like a few pointers if I you want to learn how to serve 100 miles an hour. And I'm sure the band would be interested in seeing Ed Shaughnessy's bass drum go to waste. <laughs> that's right. He used to do the accents. Let's, would uh, you like me to do that? Or? Sure, go right ahead. All right. What do you want to do, Chappie? Yeah, are you all right? Go ahead. <laughs> I thought it was you. Ed. Ed heard that, thought you were opening a bottle of wine. Ed perks up when he hears shh. <laughs> Figures it's refreshment time. Okay. Right. Let's get right to it. Right. First thing you do is remove your jacket. That's right. Uh. Ed? Okay. That's yours. You want to do this here? Do you want to go center stage or? Well, right here, I'd probably watch. take Ed's teeth out. Yeah, watch, watch. <laughs> Uh, where's, where's good for you, right? Whatever's here? good for you. Okay, right here is very good. All right, fellas. Now, the whole point of, of uh, those of you who do play tennis in East Harlem back there, the whole point is uh, to keep your feet firmly planted. Never hold your breath. Always let out any wind. Uh, and unwind much the way if you were to crack a whip. If you were to do this, the whip wouldn't crack. You've got to stop the motion of each part of your body. I better serve into this curtain. I'm going to hurt somebody. So that the motion is always an unwinding and a stopping and a stopping and a stopping of the shoulder and then the tossing of the racket into the brass section. <laughs> and keep your head up and your eye on the ball. It sort of looks like this. Now that's a low serve. Never a high toss. Keep your toss, keep your toss low. Notice that... In my case, the toss comes late. I don't have to reach up for it. It's there as my racket moves, waiting for it. Okay, thanks, John. That's not a bad. The real reason I did that that's is because not a bad I want to come over and play tennis sometime. I know that. That's I not a bad service action. You uh, have pretty good movement there. Yeah, it is good action, actually. Yeah, I was talking about... <laughs> my ground strokes are off. I was talking about John McEnroe the other night, who, of course, who won both singles and doubles and when we were in the airport. He uh, it was very nice. He reached in to his, uh, his bag and he says, would you like a racket? And he reached in and gave me one of his uh, oh, he did? rackets. Isn't that nice? Did I he see. give you a bick, too, or anything? No, no. He, uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's, a nice, he's a nice fellow. Yeah, he gets a lot of We're trying to get him on the show. So you want to play tennis? Yeah. You want to make a wager on this? I mean, do you, want, do you play for fun or do you gamble? Uh, I don't gamble. 40, 50 bucks would be fine. Would my, <laughs> serious. Per point? That'd be fine. Per point. Sure. So, uh, the movie, are you a new father? I am a new father. I have a, well, a well. six-month uh, daughter, six-month-old daughter, and I'm very happy and delighted. And I know we have pictures. In fact, I actually brought one. I, uh, in a frame yet. Four months. Doesn't that, uh, isn't that a little difficult to carry around with you? Or most people uh, yeah, it's walnuts. uncomfortable you carry in the back loose pocket. Loose frame, yes. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it, but uh, if you'd like to see her at why four with uh, Janie. Why don't we show her? Her name show. is Sydney Kathleen, and she is gorgeous. Aww. And doing this stick, doing, uh, doing stuff already. I think she's trying to... Taking after her father. Already yeah. the kid is going... La, la, la. <laughs> and I think we have a shot of uh, her in the pool because we're teaching her to swim. In fact... Oh, I see. Uh, yes, we do. We did the... Uh, All kinds of... There you are, and... Uh, there's me and Sid. In the yeah, pool. that's sweet. <laughs> You know, kids can swim now at this age? Yeah. They it, teach children. Uh, there's, a, there's a lady, I can't remember her name, who actually takes infants in I, underwater I, because kids, apparently, when they're underwater, automatically hold their breath. You have to... Uh, don't do this at home. No. Because you have to blow in their face first to get them to hold their breath. There is a woman out here, Moby Margaret or something. I don't know what her name is. teaches them. Moby Margaret? Oh, oh, heavy set. Yeah. Uh, who, stump, who stump teaches lady. them. But we're, we're teaching. Of course, we, we had the Lamaze method, and we did the Russian birthing method, which is a, uh, an unusual thing, which is an underwater birthing method, because right. they are used to the womb. Right. And we did it in the jacuzzi. It was a little rough. Uh, <laughs> had the jets on at the time, really did you? See, yeah, yeah, sure. It was very fast, very fast. 
but the fact that you were a former Olympic swimmer, I suppose, is good for the child. It also. helped. It yeah, helped. teach her the basic, <laughs> basic strokes. Were you there in the delivery room as the, your child yes, arrived? Yes, I was. We we went to the ABC, the alternative birth center for uh, uh, for comedians. I gather that's, <laughs> and it was 20 hours of labor and. Uh, uh, Janie, who was a pentathlete, uh, which is like a decathlete, it's a half. Uh, <laughs> her brothers were, were decathletes. Uh, did Lamaze, no medication. And for anybody who is going to have a baby and wants to do it with that method, it's great because the father does get to be there and sweat off about 20 pounds. Yeah. And it's all breathing. And basically, because I think of her uh, uh, athletic background, she had the breathing down, mm -hmm. controlled the pain all the way through. That's great. So that Sydney never had any medication, as was has been alert the whole time. That's kind of a nice emotional thing, also for the yeah, father to be it in is. closely like that. That's great. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back and talk to Dad here. Right after this. This must be pain. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. We're talking with Chevy Chase. Who has a new movie called uh, National Lampoon's uh, Vac Vacation, right? Vacation. Mm -hmm. I saw this poster here. Now, come on, tell me about it. Oh, well, that, I, that looks I, to I me a little. I poster uh, long because I thought, what the heck? If you've ever seen merchandising for films or stars, it may be interesting to note that none of them look even remotely like the star they're supposed to be. This is now, supposed to be uh, Sabrina to Kate Jackson. Not exactly looks like Kate just Jackson. Just like Kate, doesn't it? Here's a nice one of Jacqueline Smith, and I have one here of Farrah that just knocks me out, frankly. Uh, I'm willing to put out about four cents for that. <laughs> and this makes Diana, uh, I don't know, she's Arabian here or something. Yeah. Look at this. So I figured, not too close. What the um, and that brought up the poster, did it? Well, it sort of did, but here's one of my favorites uh, that I just thought you might... Billy Carter's Redneck Power Pickup. Wow, I'll bet, I'll bet those are moving hot now. Yeah, it straightens out its own corners, I guess. I don't know yeah. what... Now, so what I figured is... our poster might be somewhat misleading. What the heck? These movies are selling, and... Uh, what camera's good for you? Uh, now, look. Right now, come on. Now, right look at the right poster. Now. Right. Now, get a shot of this. Now, now go in on the face. I, I do want to say that I, that I did work out. I, I'll agree <laughs> A little misleading. It's misleading in terms of the story, but... Uh, <laughs> you uh, have no pride at all, do you? No pride and no shame. <laughs> we, we do have a clip. I we think. do have a film clip. Does this need uh, any, as they say? I might as well... Uh, set up? Sure, I'll set it up real fast by saying that uh, there are two surprises in this movie, among others. And one is that I am followed on this r trip across country with my family by Christy Brinkley in a Ferrari. Oh, me. The other is that I have to take Aunt Edna, played by Imogene Coca, and her dog to Phoenix, another sudden surprise. And it's one of those sort of pain in the neck things we all can relate to. I guess that's what the clip is about. All right, watch the monitors. on the picnic basket. <laughs> Imogene's dog. Kind of a and... Noel Coward type of comedy there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drawing, Christ... drawing room stuff. Christy Brinkley is one of our fine actresses. Yes, she is. Uh, all, she's an all around her. You know, she may not be that great yet, but she will be because she's got the brains for it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Of course, she's gorgeous. Of course, she's become an industry, that, that girl. Yes, she has, and I'm, I got stock. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, she, she has. She's, she's gorgeous. She reminds me of Cheryl Teagues a little bit, except that she's younger. But yeah. they almost look a, a bit of a, a, a little, little bit. Okay. We have to do a commercial here? Yes, we do. And we shall be return or be back. David Fay has been with us before. He is a uh, bright young comedian from New York. And David will be in Chicago tomorrow night for a week at Zany's Comedy Club. Good name for a comedy club. <laughs> Bad name for a bank. <laughs> How would you like to have your... Where do you bank? Zany's Bank. No way. <laughs> On July 26th, he'll be opening for the Little River Band at the Oakdale Music Fair in Wallingford, Connecticut. And on August 4th, he's at Harrow's Atlantic City with Leo Sayer. Would you welcome David Say? David. Thank you, Johnny, for mentioning where I will be appearing. I appreciate that. Thank you. I've been on the road uh, quite a lot lately, and I, um, I learned one thing from traveling, and that is that the airlines don't know what to call your suitcase, because when you check it, it's luggage. When you claim it, it's baggage. When they lose it, it's garbage. <laughs> and I, uh, I came out from New York, I saw Quest for Fire on the plane. How many people saw Quest for Fire? Is that a weird movie? They had some very unusual mating habits back then, didn't they? Like what they would do is, the males would wait till the females got thirsty and went to the stream. Then when they bent down to get some water, the guys would sneak up behind them. I was thinking, things haven't really changed that much, you know? Because <laughs> guys are still saying, would you like a drink? You know? <laughs> I'll tell you another thing you see at the airport. Uh, Los Angeles Airport is such a big airport. They have a lot of international flights out of here. And I happen to see a few of the uh, flight attendants from the Japanese airline. And they dress them up like geisha girls. Have you seen that? They make them wear the kimono. Then they have the sash with the little pouch on the back. I found out what's in that thing. That's the emergency kimono in case the main ones doesn't open. <laughs> Thank you, skydivers. I'll tell you another thing you see all over the place. Are those blood pressure machines. Have you seen those? 50 cents? Put your arm in, checks your blood pressure. I was thinking pretty soon we'll have a machine that gives you an entire examination. Put in a dollar, little hand comes out, says cough. <laughs> <laughs> they even did that in Times Square, there'd be a line a block and a half long waiting to use it. <laughs> and my buddy picked me up last night. We went to a uh, birthday dinner and uh, we were driving along. He's got a new little car and on the side of the car it has this sticker. It says this car gets 33 miles on the highway, 22 miles in the city then they always tell you, your actual mileage may vary depending on the way you drive. Like if you drive with the motor running, you might get three, four miles to the gallon. <laughs> Say that. You ever drive along with so little gas, you're not sure you're gonna make it to the next station? So what do you do when that happens? You speed up so you get there before you run out, right? <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You figure if you're going 80, you can coast 12 miles, get some gas. So we get to this birthday uh, dinner and I realized that whoever wrote the birthday song just assumed that everyone has a two syllable name. You ever notice that? Because that's so many notes they left for the name in the song. Right, like happy birthday to Billy. Two syllables, perfect, right? If it's not two, you have to, uh, like if it's one syllable, you have to stretch it. Like this girl's name was Marge, so you have to go Marge. <laughs> if it's a big, long Spanish name, you have to put it on the shelf. Like happy birthday to Jose Rodriguez, Gonzalez Martinez Lopez. <laughs> I took Spanish in high school, and uh, one time I didn't do my homework, the next day, the teacher called on me. She said, David, say it's 515 in Spanish. So I tried to fake it. I went, hey, man, it's like what I have to fight. <laughs> I was not a great student. I remember one time, my father said between me and my brother, whoever got the best report card could get a new bike. And my brother got an A, two Bs, and two Cs. I got three Ds and two Fs. He asked me who did better. I said, I did, I got a full house. <laughs> I was in high school a long time. I was actually there about six years. I was, you know, in your class ring, the way it has the year you graduate? On my ring, the last number was on a wheel. You could just turn it like that, you know, kind of adjust it to the right <laughs> But you don't learn everything you have to know in high school. Like, uh, I've been trying to learn how to cook. And one thing I realized uh, from cooking is that I used a crock pot. You ever used one of those things? Turn it up to high, it gets a little warm. <laughs> right, low is like if you want to have beef stew when you get out of prison. <laughs> Right, you're going away for four years. When you get out, your sub is going to be ready. <laughs> you ever washing up around the sink and you get a bug? You don't want to kill him because you feel guilty? So you give him trial by ordeal? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You wash him down the sink. If he can get back to the mainland, he can live. <laughs> you know? Sometimes you make it a little tough, you turn on the disposal. <laughs> 
They like that. It's like a tilt-a-whirl ride for them. They like I think the really classy bugs hang out in the bathroom, though, because they like ballet. Really, because when you flush them down the toilet, they do a little pirouette as they're going down. <laughs> and girls are always leaving stuff uh, laying around the bathroom. I notice now a lot of girls are wearing those bras with the hook over here instead of in the back. Have you seen that? That's a little unorthodox, guys, isn't it? Kind of like handling front-wheel drive. <laughs> And it's so hard to buy stuff for people because uh, you never know what they like and they might not uh, want to keep it. And sometimes you buy a present and they go to return it, and they can't get back their money, they get a credit instead. That ever happened to you? And you really can't use anything else in the store? That I had it with my grandfather. We got him one of those uh, motorized hospital beds. <laughs> they took it back and they said, you can't exchange it, but you can get a credit. You know, you can... So here he is in a surgical supply shop with a credit slip, right? <laughs> he looked like he was picking out prizes on a Wheel of Fortune game show. It's like, I'll take the oxygen tent for 275, you have been a hernia trust 119, I'll take the anima bag and the his and hers bedpans for 26. We'll be right back. Okay, my next guest, let me tell you about Karen. Most cities, I know Los Angeles, has what they call public access TV. Uh, I'm going to have to find out from her how she managed to, uh, how you get on that. But she has a show called Karen's Restaurant Review. And we thought you'd like to meet her. Would you welcome Karen Salkin? <laughs> really dressed up for this, didn't you, tonight? Yes, I think it, it's, um, it was a dress of shares, and I bought it at her garage sale. You're kidding. So, I, I, she really had a garage that's sale. That's what I read in the paper. Yeah, and, and uh, so um, I got it, invited. It was invitation only. They had to a, find someone else her size. Was this a good said, buy? I mean, I mean... Um, it was no. a real good... You want to know prices? Well, I'm wondering. It's probably a very expensive dress. <laughs> it was $1,500, but for me, $75. That's, that's a, good, right? Yeah. Now, I saw you, uh, I've seen your show before. Uh, it's you have? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I'm yeah, so excited. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you, you and you my do, family. You do have a lot of energy. Do you have many viewers? I mean, have you figured out how many um, people watch your show? No, well, <laughs> some people here, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, I know that there's a market of 100,000 people, uh -huh. but I get fan letters from a lot of people. Yeah, now this is I what do. they call public it's access. How do you get on? <laughs> you pay. You pay. <laughs> yes, you have to have a boyfriend who has some money who says, I'll go on the air. My boyfriend's tired of hearing me talk all the time. Yeah. So he's, to him, you know, he wants to hear me talk to everybody else. So not everyone else wants to hear me talk to them. But he said, <laughs> he's... <laughs> That's all right, just go right ahead. We I know, but I have to tell you one thing before. I know I have to finish telling you that. But a few years ago, I've been dying to tell you this for you. I've been talking to you for years, really? but you don't know about it. Yeah. I've been in my, when I go to sleep and when I wake up. Really? <laughs> you're not there? there. Um, no, no, what? he's not there. My oh. boyfriend is. My ah. boyfriend says, why do you keep calling me Johnny? Right. <laughs> so, so, so he, he, um, he funded you, in a way. Yes, but I want to tell you this one thing. I know I'm not supposed to interrupt anybody, but um, I can do, well, she anyhow, can. a few years ago, there was a Christmas party here. You weren't here then either. You're never here when I'm here. Oh. But anyhow, I saw this stage, and I came, and I sat down, and I practiced talking to everyone, and I was telling the make-believe audience that I was here a few years ago doing this. Yeah. And then I had my friends come out and surprise me. You know, like how yeah. Burt Reynolds surprises sure. Everyone surprises people, and I went, oh! <laughs> so you kind of rehearsed for this. <laughs> yes. And here you are. It was like a few years yeah. ago. So. What, is it, what does it cost to get uh, on, on, on public access? $35. <laughs> you pop for $35 to get the show. Yeah. Do you have yeah. an audience? You have an audience? Um, six people. Six people. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, no, more would come if I invited them. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, I'm not, you, this is like, what? You do this, this once 500? a week? It's I, 500 people. I do it, um... This is so exciting. Okay, I do it. I'm just, I have, still haven't got over I come to work feeling that way every day. <laughs> Walk in here and I say, this is so... I really do. Never gotten over it. This so, is, but, well, I'm um, glad. This is the most it, it exciting thing. It cost me 35 <laughs> That's right. Show, so. <laughs> it cost me nothing. So, now, you... Yet. I don't know. You, you review... Uh, let me jump in here somewhere. <laughs> you review restaurants. Supposedly. Supposedly no, review yes. restaurants. I do review restaurants, but it's a half-hour show with no commercials. Ah. So I get to talk for a whole half hour in a row. That's why I'm not used to somebody else talking to me, so jump in. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> just give me a little nod when you, yeah. think, when you come to the end of, you come to the end of a sentence, you just go something like that, and I'll go. Hmm. 
<laughs> but okay. one of the things you do is you review. It's called Karen's Restaurant <laughs> Reviews, review. right? Yes, but I do. My boyfriend had always wanted me to do a public access show uh -huh. because public access is really good for people who want to do something and no one else will give them a job. Absolutely. So all they have to do is people would always say to me, you must be good for something, but uh -huh. they never figured out what. Well, it was. So, <laughs> yes. So, well, some figured it out. Well, your but... boyfriend obviously knows. <laughs> uh, so... It's what, just no, what, the dress. What are your qualifications uh, oh. as a okay. restaurant critic? I have a mother who taught well, me how not to... <laughs> Nobody can fight that. That's uh, No, that was the first... Solid credentials. I have a mother... <laughs> You're so funny. Well... <laughs> that's, that's why I get more than $35 a week. <laughs> Get the oh, that's right. You he paid the 35 He doesn't course. pay me. That's right. I got it now. Well, <laughs> one of these days, someone... Aren't you're you paying me. You're you have a mother. Yes, you are. I have a mother who, um... I am you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Some people have all no, the I'm breaks. Feel terrible. Do you have a mother? Is she? A, is she? A, I have Ed's mother. Uh, yeah. Is she, <laughs> is she an expert on food? No, she oh. taught me how to not cook. She, and then I people see. have to take you out to restaurants. Okay. You see, you say to guys, I would make dinner for you, but I don't know how to cook. Yeah. And then they say, Oh, you poor little thing. I'll, let me take you out. All right. And so you, and so you go okay. Out to now you go to you go to restaurants of your own choosing. Do they try to bribe you at all and say, hey, if you give us a good review, you know, we'll give you a free meal? Yeah, a few people bribed me to, ma to that, mention you me on your show. You can't do that. You <laughs> no, see, they that's didn't real bribe. They gave me like a, a hamburger. Yo, that's for a hamburger, you can't. No, that's uh, it. No, no. no. But what, no, what they do is a lot not of restaurants... National, not for a hamburger. You can't get national television. Right. Time. No. <laughs> How about two and a hot dog? Well, then maybe we're, we're, we can do business. <laughs> um, they... Now, what was I going to say? I don't know. I never know what I'm talking about. Well, I was hoping you knew. No, it didn't make a difference. It's not important. What restaurant... If I was going to go out... I'm going to going out to dinner tonight. Have you found it? With whom? <laughs> this wasn't an offer, excuse me. Oh, I mean, okay. uh, no, I'm busy after the show. Oh, okay. so. um, so have you found a, a, a new little uh, place yes. to go? A little place Can, that might I, be exciting? I, you yes, tell I us about wonderful places. Okay, give There's me a, a Really, my new favorite place is back on Broadway in Santa Monica. It's a little place. The uh -huh. guy used to have Ocean House Cafe right. on um, the beach. I mm -hmm. guess Ocean House would be in the ocean, right? Okay. Pretty. So, and then he moved to Santa Monica, and he has really good food. What and kind so, of food? Um, but everyone asks me. I'm not that much of an expert. It's food. That's all. You're, I know. You're, you're... <laughs> Can you get away with reviewing a restaurant saying they serve food? I can tell you that. I, what kind of a review is that? They have food. I know they have food. What kind of food is it? Has it's, it already been eaten? Yeah, it's what is it? Is it pre-digested food no, or what? It's good food. Good food. Good food, all right. What is the special what's the specialty of the house? The specialty is like chicken and rice with stuff in it. With stuff in it. Don't get too technical for me now. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, you don't hear James Beard say, hey, it's got stuff in it. I want to know. <laughs> you can't say chicken's got stuff okay, in it. Okay, it has Is that the way you order? You go and give me some chicken with some stuff in it? I mean, come on, Karen, give me a, give me a break no, here. No, it has, it has, like, um... I never is this asked a la carte or uh... no? They, this is why I like them because for a good little price, they it's... also give you crudite, which ah. wouldn't you like to know what that is? Well, that's a vegetable ball. You know what crudite? No one ever knew. <laughs> What, what kind of slobs watch your show, don't you? Sure, that's with the tomatoes and the vegetable and the carrot yes. sticks. That's crudite, right. yeah, yes. right, okay. And jicama. Yeah, well, yes. no, jicama, I'm not... It's spelled with a J. So oh, you yeah, mean that? okay. <laughs> it looks like jicama, but... So, aren't you get the crudite? And you, and you get a good little salad or a good little soup. Yeah. And then you get the meal with vegetables. I'm so hungry. I'm yeah. going to pass out, but I can't breathe in the right. dress. So, so what, would, what, would be, what would be the tab for this, uh... <laughs> Um, like nine ninety five. Well, that's, that's very bad, reasonable right? nowadays. And fabulous chocolate desserts. Chocolate desserts. If in, anybody wants me to do anything, they put chocolate in front of me. I'm theirs. Yeah. Well, that's not, not like that. No. I what don't mean happens like that. when they you want me to review? That's all I meant. What happens when you wrap a restaurant? I saw, I saw you one day, and you were really tearing into a place. If they're really. Well, I don't know what it was, but you were really giving it a hard time. <laughs> oh, I get. Well, I said one place had bad service, and one place had vile food. Right. And <laughs> the no one has vile food. Really, I hope no one's here from the no one. But they, well, really, they, I, they may hear about they, it. Yes. They can yeah, somebody was selling cable TV, and they wrote me a letter and said they knocked at someone's door and said, "Would you like to buy cable TV?" And the woman said, "I heard someone's bad mouthing my restaurant, so no, yeah. thank you." Okay. And so I felt guilty. Do you go back and give them a second chance? <clears throat> if they're really bad. Do you ever go in the kitchen? 
and see what the kitchen looks like. I try to avoid it. I don't want to know anything about kitchens, because <laughs> cause my boyfriend told me something terrible that happens in kitchens, but I don't want to tell in case waiters didn't no, think to do it on no, their let's own. Not do that. There was some like bad thing. I did go back at a kitchen. Wait, can I get sued if I say something bad about a kitchen? You, well, it depends. Uh, it, it, will you get sued or will I? You're going to get sued. <laughs> okay. I'm covered, baby, for not. all contingencies. <laughs> I only get sued off the show, <laughs> never on the show. Then I won't say. But it... <laughs> I went. No, maybe no. you better not mention the place. Okay. Just but say went, there was I a place. I went back. They serve ice cream and special hot fudge stuff in Hollywood, if anyone knows. Right. And I went to the bathroom, which you have to go through the kitchen. <laughs> that can make you sick right there. But anyhow, they had taken all the hot fudge dishes and turned them upside down and were emptying them into like a joint vat. And I was thinking, is that what they give to the next people then? I didn't understand I that. So after that, I said, it. oh, I never yeah. thought of that. So what did am you I do, boring uh, anyone? No, I'm just going to serve them up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you ever been sued? Have anybody ever gotten really angry and um, threatened to... Well, you don't, better not, if you have something pending, you better not mention it. No, no one sued me. I sue some people. What did you do, with, what what did you do before this? I was, um, I was, I'm glad you asked. I used to be in a circus. I was the divided... <laughs> you used to be in the circus? Like a, don't I look like a normal grown-up sure. person? Oh, not so grown-up. What did you do right? in the circus? I was um, the divided lady. I'd get into a box and they'd cut me up. And I was the star of the sideshow. You work with a magician? <clears throat> yes. And he... Um, yeah, magician. They told everyone I was a world-famous contortionist. I was in the fetal position. And they said, come pay extra money and come yes. up and see the great position. Yeah. I said, they're going to kill me when they see the fetal no, position. Right. I mean, what's the big deal? And they'd all look in and scream and faint. I mean, no, like, I'm no. just, you that's know... That's good like, training I mean? for a restaurant critic, though. That's, no. <laughs> well, the guy... I mean, no, the food... Julia test. Child started that way. She was a human cannonball. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back. I wish you well in your show. Thank you so much. Are you, uh, are you booked right through? You got a, a good firm contract and you're going to keep doing it? It's my own show. I'm going to do it until I get a sitcom or a movie, <laughs> right? Or that's right, if my boyfriend runs out of money, we're okay. in a lot of trouble. Then I can find somebody else to pay. Yes. Well, <laughs> I'll take all offers. Yeah, it's nice having you here. Thank really. you. It was the most wonderful thing in the entire world being here, really. You're not supposed to thank people. I was going to kiss your feet when I came out, no, but they suggested No, I, not necessary. Maybe after the show. Chevy, I suppose you feel the same way, don't I'm, you? I, I kissed him earlier. <laughs> I'm humbled by that applause. 